Hi everyone, am I audible, visible? Am I audible, visible? Hi students, am I audible, visible to you all? Do let me know in the chat section. So, happy morning everyone. Welcome to An Academy Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to continue with the same chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So, tell me how are you all doing? Are you revising the syllabus properly? Are you solving the MCQs or not? How's your preparation going? Do let me know in the chat section everyone. Good morning, good morning. Do let me know in the chat section, how's your preparation going and are you revising the questions? Are you uh, revising the things from NCRT or still you are, still you are following some other book? Tell me about your preparation everyone, quick. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Revision and question practice done, very good. Okay, preparation is going fine, very good. And what about physics and chemistry? I hope it's also going well because you know that we need all the three subjects, right? To master this NEET exam, we need all the three subjects. Okay, so now let's go, let's start this particular chapter. But before that, let me tell you students that uh, we are soon going to close the entries for your Avengers batch. So join this Avengers batch as soon as possible. And yes, 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 how can I forget to thank you all for making us 70k family, right? It was an amazing gift from your side on the occasion of Teacher's Day. Now we are 70k family. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much everyone. Thank you so much everyone. I still remember we started our channel in the month of April, right? And uh, it's September now and you made us this. Keep supporting and do share our channel with your friends as well. And uh, thank you, literally thank you so much for it. Thank you. So here you guys can see I have shared the roadmap uh, to score 650 plus marks in 239 days in, uh, uh, in 239 days. So do check this video because it is quite realistic. I have shared the timetable here and moreover in this video I uh, have uh, shared the syllabus as well and how, how you need to finish that syllabus. Okay. Okay. So you are going to find it very useful. So do check it out and here you can go to the, any video of our channel, right? In the description box, you will get the link. So this is the link for the enrollment in Avengers 2.0 batch. Okay. So soon we are going to close the entries for Avengers 2.0 as well. So if you are really interested, please join it because if you will join it late now, then it will be of no use. But, uh, you know, now all that backlogs will be there. Then you have to complete it. Then again, a pressure will be there. Okay. So it's better to start now. Still, it's not too late. I'm not saying it's, uh, it's fine to start now. I'm just saying that still, it's not too late. Okay, so please utilize this time wisely. So add your number, add your email ID, coupon code is already applied and you are going to get this batch at a price of 4999. That's all. That's all. Okay. So now let's go. Let's start this particular chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants and today mainly we need to talk about the pollination, right? And uh, in the last class we started the topic of pollination. Today mainly we will focus on agents of pollination, outbreeding devices and then the post-fertilization changes. That's what we have to do, okay? Okay? So ma'am actually I purchased mind map app but it's not showing it's learning academy app. Uh, but hey, you can just change your course, you can select IIT J course and then you will get that mind map batch of your HSP sir there, okay? You can do it in this way. Now, so now let's start it. So last time we were talking about the pollination. So everyone in the chat section, do let me know what is pollination. Yes, do let me know what is pollination in the chat section. I hope you remember it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower. Right. It is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the flower. So you know that stigma is acting like a lending platform. What is stigma students? Stigma is acting like a lending platform. So from this anther after the dehiscence these pollen grains they will fall on the stigma and if they have the compatibility this pollen 
this pollen grain will grow here it will form the pollen tube and then bachche the male gametes right the male gametes in this pollen tube they will move towards the ovule why why towards the ovule because in the ovule you know what do we have there in the ovule in the ovule embryo sac is there and in that embryo sac there will be the female gamete and that embryo sac that embryo sac because it is having the female gamete we used to call it as female gametophyte okay okay so now answer few questions of mine which one is the male gametophyte tell me which one is nandini male gametophyte quick which structure is known as male gametophyte anyone in the class which structure is male gametophyte i'm saying male gametophyte seriously it's not anther male gametophyte pollen grain pollen grain is the male gametophyte guys do revise it it's important okay female gametophyte is this embryo sac okay it is what it is the embryo sac that is the female gametophyte okay so when it comes to the pollination in the last class we have discussed about the autogamy about the gitonogamy and about the xenogamy autogamy gitonogamy and the xenogamy that's what we have covered in the last class that's what we have covered in the last class so now when you talk about the autogamy you know that it is the self pollination here you will talk about the same flower what are you going to discuss here you are going to talk about the same flower right the bisexual flower and from the same flower from the anther of same flower the pollen grains will fall on the stigma of the same flower that is autogamy that is self pollination it is also quite rare okay okay then comes your gitonogamy so now gitonogamy is quite interesting in the case of gitonogamy what is going to happen bachche flowers are different but they are genetically same can you explain the meaning of this particular line that flowers are going to be different but genetically they are same now here in gitonogamy if you remember right we know that like let's say here you have a plant this plant the plant is monoecious right the plant is monoecious but this monoecious plant this monoecious plant is having unisexual flowers okay this monoecious plant is having unisexual flowers flowers are dioecious here overall this plant is monoecious why because male and female flower is growing on same plant right but individually these flowers are unisexual let's say this one is the male flower this one is the female flower so in the case of gitonogamy no doubt anther from this particular pollen grains from this particular flower will fall on the stigma of this flower so flower is different flower is different but because it is present on the same plant so genetically it is going to be same so genetically if i will discuss here it is the self pollination isn't it it is the self pollination it's just that here you need the pollinators right to transfer your pollen grain from this flower to this flower you need the pollinator that is the only point here otherwise otherwise genetically it is also the self pollination and then comes the xenogamy right it is actually the cross pollination where genetically different flowers of same species will be there right right so that's what you need to remember now in the last class we talked about three examples where you will see two different types of flowers can you tell me the name of that examples yes that's important Yes, so Hashini, Trisha, Anushka. Very good. Very good. Exactly three examples are V O C. That is your viola, oxalis. and comelina right so here you have two type of flowers clistogamous closed chiasmogamous open so when it is closed right so obviously 110% autogamy will be there right assured seed set will be there that's what we have covered in the last class so today we are going to start with the agents of pollination right this is what we need to start right we need to start the agents of pollination so as i said when it comes to the pollination right male and female gamete okay male as well as the female gamete they are non motile 
right like if you talk about the humans in our case you know that male gametes are motile but here here neither male nor female gamete right right they are non motile basically they are not motile basically right so in that case we need some external agents it can be wind it can be water it can be animal it can be anything okay it can be anything so here if we are using wind if we are using water so they are non living agents right if you are using animals it can be insect it can be bird it can be bat it can be a snail it can be anything then it is a living agent so when you talk about the agents of pollination you are going to divide it into two agents that is abiotic one right abiotic one and the another one is the biotic one abiotic without life which includes your wind and water and biotic is the living one which includes your animals clear bachche which include your uh, which includes your animals right so that's how you can right right that's how you can write agents of pollination biotic abiotic right that's how you can make your short notes abiotic wind and water and here you have animals right here you have animals that's how you can make your notes right so now majority of plant they are going to use the biotic agents for the pollination only a small proportion will use your abiotic agent so from this simple line also they can ask you the question in the neat examination right that majority of plants are having abiotic agents or the biotic agent so you need to focus on each and every line given in ncrt right you need to revise it in that way so whenever you read ncrt right that's why i'm adding these uh, screenshots here so whenever you read ncrt please make sure please consider yourself as an examiner okay that if you will be the examiner what kind of question you can ask from this particular paragraph so if i will be the examiner definitely i will ask this question because majority of students they will get confused here right right you do not pay attention on such points you literally don't pay attention on such points right so majority of plants they use biotic agents they use living agent and very small proportion is going to use the abiotic agents clear bachche abiotic agent so ultimately pollen grains they needs to come in contact with the stigma right right and uh, it is a chance factor in both wind and the water pollination clear bachche in wind and the water pollination clear bachche clear bachche so when it is the wind pollination we use the word anemophily when it is the water pollination when it is the water pollination we use the word hydrophily right we use the word hydrophily clear so now because they are abiotic factors like you know that let's say a plant is using the water pollination so it is not like that water will come to that plant and water will be like okay i am going to pollinate you so please give me your pollen grains of course not there will be some adaptations isn't it isn't it some adaptations will be there like if i'll talk about the wind pollination let's say there is a particular plant where wind pollination is occurring in that case the pollen grains need to be right the the pollen grains need to be more right so many pollen grains need to be there in on that flower and moreover like now let's say with the with that wind right with that wind pollen grain is coming so stigma needs to be receptive as well stigma needs to be sticky as well so that it can hold that pollen grain right right so such type of adaptation should be there such type of adaptation should be there and here because we have abiotic factors so in such plants right in such plants you are not going to see that the flowers are very colorful right uh, the flowers are very colorful they are very bright no it is not like that and the flowers here will be even orderless okay okay why because here plants they, they flowers they do not have any need to attract the animals fine they have no need to attract the animals that's why clear bachche so to compensate for this uncertainties and the associated loss of pollen grain flowers are going to produce enormous amount of pollen right because with the help of wind and water the pollen grains will flow with it now so in that case what is going to happen enormous amount of pollens will form clear bachche clear 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 so comparatively number of ovules that needs to be fertilized they are less but in comparison to that number of pollen grains it will be more clear bachche it will be more so here you can see a wind pollinated plant showing 
compact inflorescence and the well exposed stamen so what you need to focus here yes what you need to focus here tell me what do you need to focus here yes that here in the case of wind pollinated flowers you are talking about the inflorescence that is group of flowers isn't it isn't it these minor details are important you are talking about the inflorescence here and here the stamens are exposed fine stamens are exposed so this is a kind of adaptation here right this is a kind of adaptation here so pollination by wind is more common but when it comes to the abiotic factors okay this point is important kindly kindly highlight it in your ncrt so wind pollination requires pollen grains what type of pollen grains are required they should be lightweight they should be non sticky so that they can be transported in wind currents this is important what type of yes this is important what type of pollen grains should be there in the wind pollinated flowers pollen grains need to be lightweight right they need to be non sticky pollen grains need to be lightweight they need to be non sticky and what type of stamen should be there well exposed stamen right well exposed stamen so please please make the notes okay so stamen well exposed pollen grains lightweight they needs to be non sticky clear bachche clear bachche and when it comes to the stigma it is feathery right feather like stigma is there so first thing you will see the inflorescence you will see well exposed stamens you will see pollen grains are lightweight they are non sticky you will see that feathery stigma will be there okay feathery stigma will be there so these are important points clear bachche clear bachche and such flowers they often have a single ovule in each ovary right and many flowers are packed together so in fluorescence you are going to see so these are the important points please highlight it okay okay so here you can see the examples as well yes question can come from examples as well so when it comes to the example it is the corn cob tessel okay in the case of corns that tessels that cob is having that tessels now right right so so they are nothing they are the stigma and style they are the stigma and style clear bachche clear bachche so wind pollination is very common in monocot especially in the case of grasses fine it is very common in monocot especially in the case of grasses clear bachche yes 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 done so as i said here the flower flowers are not going to be attractive they are odorless they do not have that nectar right and moreover this wind pollination is very common in the case of gymnosperm specially specially your pinus you know in the case of pinus all that yellow dust all that yellow dust of pollen grains right it is also known as uh, sulfur uh, it is also known as sulfur shark right yellowish in color all that pollen grains they will flow with the wind okay and in the case of pinus bachche your pollen grains are winged what type of pollen grains are there pollen grains are winged and please tell me right this is your homework you will mention it in the chat section that in the case of cycas do we have winged pollen grains or not okay do we have winged pollen grains or not that's what you will mention in the uh, comment section okay that uh, done bachche done so this is about the this is about the anemophily right this is about the anemophily the next is the hydrophily next is the hydrophily and it is quite rare when you are talking about the hydrophily when water is used as the pollinating agent but it is not always mandatory that if a plant is aquatic it is going to uh, follow the it is going to use the uh, hydrophily it is not mandatory at all right that if a if a particular plant is aquatic then it will go for the water pollination only it's not mandatory i'll give you one example uh, two examples here and that's important like uh, the example of your lotus the example of your acornia acornia you know na water hyacinth terror of bengal acornia is water hyacinth terror of bengal they are aquatic right they are aquatic plants they are aquatic plants but do not use water pollination okay they do not pollinate with the help of water done see ana 
they are so good they are living in water still they are not using water okay they are living in water they are still not using water they are like okay fine we are living there but still we will find another ways we will go for the wind pollination we will go for the insect pollination but we are not going to use the water so these examples are important clear bache so not all aquatic plants they use water for pollination that's what you need to remember okay not all aquatic plants they are going to use the water for the pollination so as i said bache the pollination by water is quite rare it is limited to only 30 per 30 genera only 30 genera imagine right it is limited to only 30 genera imagine clear so mostly monocots are going to use it clear bache clear bache so water is a regular mode of transport for the male gametes among the lower plants if you remember in the case of algae in the case of bryophytes that's what we discuss even in algae even in bryophyte remember algae bryophytes even in pteridophytes we know now water is very important for the sexual reproduction like antherozoids remember biflagellated biflagellated male gametes Bioflagellated male gametes and therozoids, they need water for their transportation. Okay, they need water for their transportation. So, you know that water is very important when it comes to the sexual reproduction. But here in pollination, it is not, in higher plant, it is not so common. In 30 genera, you will see the uh, water pollinated plants, right? So, for see, it is believed that for some bryophytes and pteridophytes, their distribution is limited because of the need for the water. Right, because of the need for the water. We have already discussed it in plant kingdom. Clear, bache? So now here, when you talk about the pollination by water, here we have three examples. Velicinaria, Hydrilla, Zostera. Right, examples are important. Question will definitely come from examples. Right. What are we discussing? We are discussing hydrophily. Right, what are we discussing? We are discussing hydrophily. So here you have epi hydrophily hypohydrophily do you know the meaning of epihydrophily and hypohydrophily yes do you know the meaning of epihydrophily and hypohydrophily yes so i'll give you the example here here you will talk about velicinaria okay here you are going to talk about what you are going to talk about velicinaria and in hypohydrophily you will be discussing hydrilla and zostera zostera is marine it's sea grass okay it's marine it's sea grass so these are three examples that we have so what is the meaning of epihydrophily can you tell me what is the meaning of epihydrophily yes Tell me, Bache, epi means above na. What is the meaning of epi? Epi means above. So here, the water pollination will be there on the surface of water, right? It will be there on the surface of water. Clear? This is the meaning of epi hydrophily. Like if it is a water body, the surface, the surface here. The, the pollination will be there on the surface and when you are talking about the hypohydrophily of course the pollination is not there on the surface it will be somewhere here right right so that's what you need to remember so when you talk about this velicinaria what is going to happen velicinaria is a dioecious plant dioecious means it is unisexual okay it is unisexual so female pl uh, plant will grow female plant will grow a long stalk right which is coiled which is coiled but uh, at maturity it will also uncoil so what is going to happen your stigma will come to this part to the water surface and when you are talking about the male flowers right so inflorescence is there inflorescence is there so from that inflorescence male flowers will get free they will come on this water surface the pollen grains will shed and here on the surface of water pollination will occur but in the case of hydrilla and zostera the story is opposite so this is what you need to remember clear bache this is what you need to remember but now let's revise it from NCRT. So here you guys can see that, okay, Velicinaria and Hydrilla, they grow in fresh water. That's what you need to remember as well, right? They both are growing in fresh water. As I said, your Zostera is seagrass, it is marine then, 
right it is seagrass it is marine that so not aquatic all aquatic plants they use water for pollination i told you already right just say your water hyacinth and water lily your water hyacinth and water lily right see there in the majority of in majority of in majority of aquatic plants like water hyacinth and water lily the flowers emerge above the level of water and are pollinated by insects or wind right right so here it is water lily and right lotus example i need to check once uh, i need to check it uh, once again in the case of lotus but yes it is water lily according to me lotus is also there but i have to check it okay so you as of now what is given in ncrt as per that uh, you in, uh, you write it down in your notes so it is water lily and acornia acornia is your water hyacinth terror of bengal right acornia is your water hyacinth your terror of bengal so so these examples are again important clear bache so in valley scenario as i said flower female flower reach the surface of water by long stalk male flowers or pollen grains are released onto the surface of water they are carried passively by water currents right some of them eventually reach the female flowers and the stigma so it's a chance process okay it's a it's a chance process clear clear bache right so in another group of water pollinated flowers like your sea grasses female flowers they remain submerged like it is under the water surface hypohydrophily it is and pollen grains are released inside the water clear so here pollen grains are long ribbon like and they are carried passively inside water right bache they will reach stigma and then the pollination will occur clear then the pollination will occur so in that case the pollen grains are right covered with a mucilaginous covering done bache right so that water should not harm it that so that water should not harm it clear so pollen grains are protected from wetting by a mucilaginous covering right by a mucilaginous covering so here examples are very important done examples are very important any doubt here so i hope you are including such points in your notes as well next is the zoophily that we need to understand so tell me if there is any doubt tell me if there is any doubt sure so next is your zoophily right next is your zoophily okay so here you can see that uh, hydrophily see the female flower coming to the water surface see the male flowers right the this diagram is given in your book this diagram is given in your ncrt right so uh, do uh, do check it out as well so now the next is zoophily so majority of flowering plants they use a range of animals as the pollinating agents right so when they are using the animals it is going to be zoophily as i said so bees butterflies flies beetles wasps ant moth bird they all are they all are the pollinating agents right so basically mainly here you will see insects mainly you will see insects and among insects it is the bee which is very common pollinating agent right among insects it is the bee which is very common pollinating agent so when we are using insects right specifically insects it is known as entomophily right entomophily what is it it is entomophily so here you can see your bees butterflies they all are pollinating agents sunbirds hummingbirds bats they all are pollinating agent and other than this other than this see some primates arboreal arboreal means those animals which used to live on the trees right they are tree dwelling rodents or even reptiles like your gecko lizard right your garden lizard they are also they are also pollinator for some species okay they are also pollinator for some species so you cannot say that the lizard the lizard is not a pollinating agent yes it is your uh, garden lizard your gecko lizard they are also the pollinating agent but for few species okay but for few species but very common type is entomophily clear bache right very common type here is entomophily clear so here you can see because now see animals are involved right animals are involved in the pollination so obviously that flowers need to be beautiful they need to be brightly colored there should be the nectar there then only that that particular insect will visit that flower otherwise it is of no use like if i talk about the honey bees because they need to collect the nectar they will visit from flower to flower 
right they will visit from flower to flower so such type of things should be there when when we talk about the insect pollinated flowers clear bache clear, clear bache so majority of insect pollinated flowers are going to be large they are colorful they are fragrant and rich in nectar large colorful fragrant and rich in nectar and when the flowers are small a number of flowers are clustered into an inflorescence to make them conspicuous so ultimately here the main role is to attract the insect like let's say you are going out for the shopping right so obviously if there is a shop right where you know the marketing is proper they have uh, placed their stuff in a beautiful way right you will get attracted towards it okay okay like let's say you are roaming here and there you are wandering in the market you look at a shop the whatever stuff they have they have arranged it properly they have arranged it beautifully obviously you will get attracted right you will go there you will go there even if you don't want to buy anything you will go and check that what is right what is there in this shop it is so beautiful same is the case here same as the case here because we now we need to invite someone right so obviously that flowers need to be very beautiful they, they should have something so that you know visitor come right right so that's why here the flowers are going to be beautifully colored okay they 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 are rich in nectar and if the flower size is small in that case they are they are all together they will form the group that is your inflorescence right that is the inflorescence clear bache so animals are attracted to flowers by color by fragrance right bache so but in the case of flies and beetles do you know that in the case of flies and beetles their flower they secrete foul odor to attract these animals you know flies and beetles they don't like good fragrances they need they need foul odor right so with that foul odor they will get attracted they will come to they will come and they will visit that particular flower okay they will come and they will visit that particular flower so to sustain animal visit flowers have to be provide rewards to the animals so nectar and pollen grains are floral rewards it is also M mcq right floral rewards include nectar and the pollen grains floral rewards include nectar and the pollen grain you need to remember it fine that's important nectar and the pollen grain they are the floral rewards and you know there are some animals which will visit the flower they will not but they will not do the pollination right they will just come they will visit that flower they will take the nectar but they will not help in pollination i will tell you about them also so for harvesting the reward from the flower animal visitor comes in contact with the anthers and stigma the body of animals will get a coating of the pollen grain so in that case what should be there that pollen grains need to be sticky okay in that case what should be there nandini the pollen grains need to be sticky so that they can stick to the body of that particular visitor clear bache clear bache so when the animals they carry pollen on its body they comes in contact with the stigma the pollination will occur clear the pollination will occur so this is the one way right this is the one way clear bache yes is it clear so pollen grains are sticky basically due to the presence of your pollen kit okay due to the presence of the pollen kit done okay so you know the ornamental plants ornamental flowers ornamental plants right because they need the visitors to visit so in their case you will see that flowers are very beautifully colored they are highly scented as well right they are highly scented as well they these plants utilize maximum energy right to develop different types of adaptations to attract the insect right bachche the color the fragrance like in the case of your lemon in the case of your coriander okay okay so plants are going to invest a lot of energy so that they can attract the more and more visitor fine they can attract the more and more visitor done bachche okay so now see in some species floral rewards are in providing safe place to lay eggs like tallest flower this is also important tallest flower amorphophallus the flower itself is about 6 feet in height so if here the pollinator will come pollinator will lay the eggs there as well right pollinator will lay the eggs there as well so eggs will get the protection and when this pollinator will visit the another flower the pollination will occur right the pollination will occur this example is important another example is of uh, symbiotic relationship your yucca plant and pronuba moth right your yucca plant and pronuba moth bachche it is a it is a love story it's a love story it's a true it's a true love 
ओके सो यूका प्लांट ऑलवेज नीड प्रोनेबा मॉथ फॉर पॉलिनेशन राइट दिस मॉथ विल कम विजिट द फ्लावर राइट एंड देन व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन विल ले द एग्स देयर एंड व्हेन इट विल विजिट अनदर फ्लावर राइट देन ऑब्वियसली द पॉलिनेशन विल अकर सो दे बोथ आर देयर लाइफ साइकिल डिपेंड्स अपॉन ईच अदर यू नो इट इज अ सेम बायोटिक रिलेशनशिप इन देयर केस देयर इज अ सेम बायोटिक रिलेशनशिप सो दिस प्रोनेबा मॉथ राइट द पॉलिनेशन व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन what is going to happen the insect will lay eggs in the locule of the ovary of flower larvae will come out of the eggs when seed will start developing so life cycle their life cycle depends upon each other right so it is a it is a symbiotic relationship it's a symbiotic relationship clear bachche so female moth will come will give the eggs in the locules of the ovary here so when the seed will start forming the larvae will come right the larvae will come clear bachche so that's what you need to remember that's what you need to remember okay so their life cycle is dependent on each other now their life cycle is dependent on each other so another examples are also there one example is uh, yeah it is in the case of bumblebee i hope you remember where we talk about the pseudo copulation so in nature actually there are different different uh, adaptations right these plants they adapt in a different different ways for the pollination so do you know the example of bumblebee yes do you know the example of bumblebee anyone anyone here yes do you know about this actually what is happening uh, ophirus ophirus is a orchid right it's a it's an orchid right orchids you know na so in the case of ophirus what is happening the bee right bumblebee or you can also say any other wasp okay so what is happening the male okay the male member the male member like when you talk about this particular flower you will see that petals petals look like the female moth right petals are going to look like the female wasp okay so male will come right as per male like let's say if there is a flower and one petal is looking like the female so this particular wasp a uh, male wasp or uh, the bumblebee what will they do they will see that they, they'll find that this particular petal is just like the female the order is just like the female the smell is just like the female so the male will visit this flower right male is visiting here for the copulation but actually the cop copulation is not occurring right actually the copulation is not occurring so that's why we are using the word pseudo copulation here right that's why we are using the word pseudo copulation here what is the word here it is the pseudo copulation so in the case of orchid ophirus you will see this example right there is one wasp or you can also call it bumble bee so by means of pseudo copulation there will be the pollination clear clear so the petals of the flower that flower is looking like the female wasp right actually it is the mimicry okay so what is going to happen the male wasp will visit this flower and uh, for the copulation which is actually the pseudo copulation and in this way the pollen grains from one flower will be transferred to another clear bachche clear bachche okay so we have one more example we have the example of replesia as well in the case of replesia it's quite different you know elephants are going to help in elephants are going to help in the seed dispersal here do you know that subhashini elephants are going to help in the seed dispersal here yes so replesia its order is just like fall order is there just like rotten meat the smell is just like rotten meat so some flies will come to it right some flies will come to it in this way the pollination will occur but the elephant is going to help in the seed dispersal so there are very uh, you know there are beautiful examples in the nature right for the pollination and even in the case of birds if you will study ever now you will find different different types of uh, mechanism different different types of mating calls there right so ultimately you know that nature nature is very interesting okay now so uh, now they are saying that why don't you observe some flowers of the flowering for the, of the following plants like cucumber mango people coriander papaya onion lobia cotton tobacco rose lemon eucalyptus banana try to find out which animal visit them so okay this is your homework okay this is your homework 
okay so i will help you here right i'll help you here actually here in these case like coriander your onion lobia in such cases na you know the flowers are beautifully uh, flowers are beautiful they are highly scented right so they attract the insects right even in the case of eucalyptus even in the case of brassica okay that's what you will see that's what you will see clear bache clear bache but still try to find out the insects are there but still check it out fine just still check it out okay so this is what you need to study like you could also try to see whether there is any correlation in characters of flower to the animals carefully observe if one of the visitor come in contact with anthers so this is what you can do for yourself okay and as i said there are some pollen or the nectar robbers as well they will visit the flower but they will not help in pollination they will just take that pollen or the nectar right such such uh, such visitors are known as pollen or the nectar robbers clear bachche such visitors are known as pollen or the nectar robbers clear 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 okay done sure so before starting the outbreeding devices here see uh see here we were even talking about the sunbirds and the hummingbirds na sunbirds and the hummingbirds so if bird is used for pollination it is known as ornithophily right it is known as ornithophily so here in the case of flowers you know you will see that funnel shaped corolla will be there right in such flowers which are pollinated by the uh, birds in their case you will see funnel shaped corolla will be there why funnel shaped so that the beak of the bird can go inside okay so that beak of the bird can go inside so it is the ornithophily right it is the ornithophily clear bachche clear bachche i hope you know about the butea monospermae i hope you know about the bombex so these are the plants these are the trees in which right bird uh, poll uh, bird pollinators will come right bombex your silk cotton tree butea monospermae is there clear clear and sometimes which a bat bat is also used for pollination so when bat is used it is known as chiroterophily it is known as chiroterophily so the example of that particular tree is bohemia okay it is known as bohemia done it is known as bohemia done bachche okay fine 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 done so can you tell me about the mango mango is pollinated by yes mango is pollinated by can you tell me about mango mango it's very common na mango mango is pollinated by wind or insect clear wind or insect done bachche and uh, your banana is pollinated by birds your banana is pollinated by birds right and uh, yes even by bats as well okay so that's all this is all about the pollination so all the examples which are given in ncert please do not miss it okay please do not miss it and yes the examples so here i was telling you about the examples now water lily acornia and yes lotus is also there lotus is also there in their case you will see you will see that pollination is with the help of insects not with the help of water okay the pollination is with the help of insects not with the help of water so that's what you need to remember okay so next is the next is the outbreeding devices next is what next is the outbreeding devices so what do you know about the outbreeding device tell me what do you know about the outbreeding devices yes it's easy what do you know about the outbreeding devices tell me what are outbreeding devices tell me
Do you know that? Okay. So, now when you talk about the outbreeding devices, see, no doubt, no doubt we will see that bisexual flowers are there. Right? So, Bhashini, you know that we will see that bisexual flowers are there. Hai na? Bisexual flowers are there. And that bisexual flowers, if flower is bisexual, of course, we expect the self-pollination to occur. We expect the self-pollination to occur, yes or no? Like if I talk about the flowers, you know that that flowers, they are bisexual, means they are hermaphrodite. In the flowers, there will be homogamy, right? That uh, uh, your uh, stigma and the pollen grains, like stigma will be receptive at the same time when pollen grains are released from the anther, right? And even clistogamy, even clistogamy. Don't you think that all that things promote the self-pollination? Don't you think that all these things, they promote the self-pollination? Yes or no? Don't you think that these things, they promote the self-pollination? Okay? They promote the self-pollination when your flower is closed. Hey na? When your flower is closed. Okay? Uh, when your flower is closed, clistogamy. Obviously, autogamy will occur. Homogamy means when both are. Right? There is the synchronization. There is a synchrony in the maturity of that uh, uh, stigma, uh, uh, pollen grain release and the uh, receptive nature of the stigma, there is a synchrony there, right? And the bisexuality. But you know that in the nature, we prefer the cross-pollination, right? In the nature, although we have many examples where we will see that self-pollination is possible, but still, there are some devices which prevents the self-pollination and promotes the cross-pollination. Cross-pollination is preferred. Why? Because you know that it will result in the variations. Variations are very important for the adaptations. Right? If there will be the continuous self-pollination, it will result in inbreeding depression. Right? It will result in inbreeding depression because the pollination is there in the same genes. So, the adaptation, so the variations will be less. Adaptations will not be there. So, in the changing environment, right, we need that variations for the adaptations. Clear? So, self-pollination is not preferred. This inbreeding depression where the fertility and the productivity will be reduced, it is not pre uh, preferred. In nature, we go for the cross-pollination. So, although there are many flowers that are bisexual, still in their case, you will see cross-pollination, right? And the devices that we are going to study there, the devices that promotes the cross-pollination, we consider them as the outbreeding devices. What we used to call it, we used to call them as the outbreeding devices, right? They, uh, what are they? They are the features which are favoring the cross-pollination, right? Which are the fav features which are favoring the cross-pollination. So here, what are you going to study? We will be talking about the dicleni. We'll be talking about the dichogamy, heterostyly. Right? So, these are the outbreeding devices. Dicleni will be there. Right? Dicogamy will be there. Right? But your heterostyly will be there. And yes, one more is there. I hope you remember about it. That is your, that is your self-incompatibility. What is it? It is self-incompatibility. These are the outbreeding devices. Now, what is the meaning here? Right? But when it is dicleni, it means unisexuality. Right? It means unisexuality. If flowers are unisexual, okay? If flowers are unisexual, then 110%, 110% cross-pollination will be there. That is your dicleni. When flowers are unisexual, then 110%, 110% what is going to happen? The cross-pollination will be there. That is dicleni. Then comes the dichogamy. What is the meaning of dichogamy? Here, but the maturity time of pollen release and stigma receptivity is different. Are you getting it? Maturity time of pollen release and stigma receptivity, it is different. Right? Here actually in dichogamy, you will talk about two things. One is protendry. Protogyny. These are the two words that you will study here. Okay, one is protendry, another is protogyny. One is protendry, another is protogyny. That is what we are going to study here. But you protendry, your protendrous, protendrous condition, right? Endrous means endrisium. That's how I remember. Endrous means endrisium. So here endrisium matures first. 
right here endrichium matures first right uh, in the last class i was giving you one example that let's say like i am crossed with you right and you are asking me to forgive you obviously if i if i am in the same zone like if i am convinced that okay today i am going to forgive you then only if you will say sorry i will say it's okay otherwise it is of no use right if i have decided that i am not going to forgive you ever right so obviously obviously even if you will say sorry it is of no use it is of no use right same is the case here now dichogamy means the maturity time of the pollen release and the stigma receptivity is different means there is no synchrony there right we have two words protendry protogyny protendry here endrichium matures first means your pollen grains are released but at that time right the flower is bisexual but its stigma is not receptive right right the stigma is not receptive and the pollen grains are released so of course there will be no self pollination in that case there will be no self pollination in that case isn't it and yes you are right the sunflower is the example here right the sunflower is the example and even salvia is also the example here right even your salvia is also the example here right right next is protogyny gyny word g g gynecium so here of course gynecium matures first right what is going to happen here it is a gynecium that will mature first fine it is the gynecium that will mature first that is going to be uh, the protogyny right the example here can be your fecus fecus feces clear clear so stigma is receptive but the pollen grains are not released clear stigma is receptive but the pollen grains are not released clear bache clear bache okay okay done right right and even dichogamy you will also see in chasmogamous flowers you know na chasmogamous flower they are open type of flowers so when they have exposed anther and stigma in that case also in that case also the cross pollination will be preferred now heterostyly it means the length the length right the length of your stigma the length of your stigma and style is different sometimes what is happening bachcha your stigma is very long and the uh, uh, your stigma is very long and the style is very short sometimes the style is very long right and the stigma is short in that case also in that case also right there will be no no self pollination cross pollination will be there because their lengths lengths are different right and sometimes there is self incompatibility like sometimes see i really like this this is the pollen grain of same flower right this is the stigma and this is the pollen grain of same flower but this stigma is saying ki i will not allow you to grow right right although you belong to the same species you belong to the same flower we are genetically same that's why i will not allow you to grow here right so here we talk about the role of some here uh, some genes are involved right some genes are involved self incompatibility is there okay self incompatibility is there the flower will be like that i stigma will be like i will not allow you to grow okay okay i will not allow you to grow so it's a genetic mechanism it's a genetic mechanism clear bachche clear bachche right so such examples you will see even in the case of apple even in the case of grapes you are going to see such examples okay right in the case of apple in the case of grapes you are going to see such examples clear bachche done done so the next so see the outbreeding devices majority of flowering plants produce hermaphrodite flowers and pollen grains right but still still right you know that if there will be the self pollination it will result in inbreeding depression what is inbreeding depression reduced fertility reduced productivity clear bachche so flowering plants they have developed some devices to discourage self pollination and to encourage cross pollination to promote cross pollination so you know that in what is happening see dichogamy here they have just mentioned one line but you know the meaning of this line right in some species pollen release and stigma receptivity are not synchronized means here you are talking about the dichogamy you are talking about the dichogamy now are you getting it right dichogamy so either the pollen is released before stigma becomes receptive or stigma becomes receptive much before the release of pollen so in some other species anther and stigma are placed at different positions that is heterostyly bachche so both these devices they prevent autogamy and the third device is to self incompatibility 
okay the third device is the self incompatibility which is a genetic mechanism and prevents the self pollination right right uh, from fertilizing the ovules by inhibiting pollen germination done bache done 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 yes and then comes the unisexual flowers which is dicle so that's what we have discussed okay that's what we have discussed and so dicleini you will see in the case of your papaya right unisexual that's a unisexual plant and sometimes you know now bachche this example do you remember this example castor and maize right they are monoecious they are monoecious plants means they are bisexual plants but flowers are unisexual but flowers are yes flowers are unisexual flowers are dioecious here so in such cases autogamy can be prevented but but gitonogamy will not be right autogamy will be prevented but gitonogamy will not be clear bachche clear done so papaya you know that it's unisexual okay so here both autogamy and gitonogamy will be will not be there fine Done. So next is, but your pollen pistil interaction. Next is what? Next is pollen pistil interaction. This chapter is easy now. It is not difficult. It is very easy chapter and interesting as well, right? And especially when you read that pollination mechanism in your syllabus, it's quite limited. But if you will uh, read such things in detail, you will be amazed to, to see this, right? You will literally, you will be amazed. right you can't even think of that adaptation that these flowers are having for the pollination so it's all about the survival and that's what that's what we study in the evolution as well it's actually it's all about the it's all about what it's all about the survival okay like now you are working hard day and night why because you want seat in that mbbs college you know that more than 23 lakh aspirants are there and when it comes to the seats for the mbbs they are near about 1 lakh so for your survival you are studying so hard you know right okay so students rest the this part we will discuss in next class because today we will not be able to finish it because right after your class i have class in avengers batch okay so we just need one more class for it i know i'm going slow here okay i know i'm going slow here but it's fine you will get four questions from this part and we have time to finish the syllabus no one Fine, no worry. And see this extra diagram also. This is from UNCRT. Look at it. Okay. So we will discuss each and everything in detail. Fine. We are going to discuss each and everything in detail. So uh, we'll keep one more lecture for this particular topic, and then hopefully in that lecture we'll finish it. Fine. In that lecture we'll finish it. So take care. Bye bye. Thank you so much for watching. And yes, the most important thing is this part. this part so join this batch as soon as possible and do check out this video even wazim sir has posted one video uh, on all about meet right even i have posted the video how to read the ncert how to revise in less time so there are very good videos present on this channel right right you just need to explore the video section and whatever is bothering you definitely you will get a video on that particular topic and if there is something which you want me to uh, you know discuss with you all please put that topic in the comment section i will check it and i will definitely make video on that okay i will definitely make video on that so join the batch which as soon as possible the teachers the team is amazing and the hard working they are right we know what to deliver right and this batch is not for you people this batch is for us because it is our dream batch and we don't want one or two selections from this batch we want many 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 selections from this batch in my biology batch it is final that no one is going to score below 350 right right so i don't want only one or two or three students that are getting 360 out of 360 marks no no majority of students need to score above 350 marks that's why you know we are keeping the doubt sessions we are keeping the practice sessions right uh, i'm uh, picking up some important books like sometimes the shop publications mtg fingertips and i'm keeping classes on that particular i'm keeping classes on our platform where we are discussing the questions from that books right so in this way you are studying in this way you are revising the things you know biology is very scoring i know biology is easy but still you have to study it if you will not revise we have so many things to retain right total 38 chapters are there and they are quite lengthy if i talk about the diversity so many examples are there so you need many rounds of revision 
right so join the batch so that you can finish your syllabus on time and so that you can practice the questions so as i'm saying i used to keep sessions where we practice the questions from disha publication from mtg fingertips from any other book right right so join the batch as soon as possible and thank you so much for watching stay tuned we'll tell you about the next class schedule and yes on friday there will be the marathon session on breathing and exchange of gases where in one shot we will finish that chapter okay so take care